we're going to learn how to add objects, delete them, and also deal with the viewport shading and shaders. So when you start Blender, you have these three default objects in here and you have the outliner where you could select these objects. To delete them, you could click in the viewport and just press the delete key. You click object selected and delete key to undo control Z. Same thing in here, control Z. What you could also do is click on it and press the X key on your keyboard, but it's going to confirm if you want to delete. So you press, you have to select delete in the menu that pops up, control Z to undo. So to delete it in the outliner, if you click on it and then hover over the outliner, so you're in that context of that editor of the, of the outliner, where is it over here? So if you have something selected, if you just press X, it will delete it. Control Z to undo, or you just press delete, it will delete it. Control Z to undo. It won't ask you to confirm. So if you want to add objects, so let's say I got rid of this cube. If I want to add an object in the scene, what you could do is while you're in your 3D viewport, which we have right here, you go to add in the view 3D viewport menu, go to add, then you, these are the types of things you could add to your scene. So we see, let's say a mesh, and we can go down to monkey and it'll add a monkey in here. So you could then take this and move it up a bit. And you could see it's faceted. So one thing you could do is have it selected. If you right click and choose shade smooth, then it won't have that faceted look. And what you could do as well is have a ground. And we do that, but we could do add mesh and then say plane. But another thing you could do is if you, while you're in your viewport, if you do shift A, the hotkey shift A, then you have the add menu up here. And what you could do here is go to add a mesh and then plane. And when you add an object in here on the bottom left, you usually have parameters that you could change before you commit them. So one of them, it, one of the parameterization here is you could change the size of the plane and generate the UVs automatically, which we could explain later what, are you, what UVs are. But we could change the size of the plane before we commit to it. So I'll just make it 10 just for now. Well, 10 and then press enter there. If I click in the viewport, it will commit it. All right. So now what we're going to do is select an object. We'll take Suzanne, the which is the name of the monkey geometry that we have. While it's selected, we could go uh, down to the editor here, which you can see by the icon is the properties editor. And down here, we'll have the material property of it. If you click on it, what we could do is click to add a new material and it'll add a default one. We'll just choose what we have right now and we'll click. We'll talk about these properties in detail later, but for now to get things to work to demonstrate it. On the base color, we could click on it and we could choose a base color. Now the thing is you don't see anything change at the moment. If we click on these different options up here, up here we'll have, you could see wireframe, you'll see the wireframe of it. You see the solid color here. You could, you'll see here you have different options. Uh, this one is material preview. And this one is the rendering view, rendered view. So while let's say we're in material preview, we could change what it would look like, the color, but with the color wheel. And we could visualize what it is. Now it's useful or preview, material preview. You could use it for like look development. And what's good about it is that you could see what it would look like without actually having lights in the scene. By default, we have this light in here. But the reason why it works is because if I click on the twirl button next to it, you'll get properties for what you have selected. And by default, it's not using the scene lights or the scene world. It's using HDR light. And if you click on here, you could change the lighting to see what it looks like. And is not, it's so it gives you a, a, a good idea of like in different lighting scenarios what it would look like. So right now, 
let's just say we want we were doing look development and we're looking at this and we say okay we want the roughness to go down so you know those specular highlights are a little tighter we'll go into details what those means later and you can adjust other things as well with this but let's say we have that then we go back while we're still in the material preview view, view click on these icons and then try see what they look like in different environments HDR environments so it, it really streamlines that process so let me just put it back to this for example as an example so just to go over by default we have solid uh, which we have over here right um, and this is probably the quickest way to visualize in your viewport many objects quickly and and it doesn't have much computational hit on it right next to it on the left you have wireframe which you can see by default when you click on wireframe it toggles this on which is called x-ray so you could see if i go back to solid it's off you could turn on x-ray which allows you to see through the objects it, so you could see objects that are occluded or or being hidden by the objects in front from the point of view in x-ray when you go in wireframe x-ray is on by default you could turn it off and you'll only see the wireframe of what you see anything occluded behind will not be blocked and won't distract you if you want to see that way and also affects selections if things are in x-ray or not only will select what's hit if it's an x-ray that includes things that are occluded or things that are hidden behind other objects here so we mentioned material preview earlier so it allows you to preview materials using hdr lights you can still turn on like scene lights for example if you have them and the scene lights that you have in your scene will now affect it but then you have render and this is supposed to give you a representation of what the render would look like by actually calculating in the viewport what the rendered image would, would be calculated to so if i select the light for example and move it around you'll see the shadows actually get updated to where the light is and this is a point light by default that comes into the scene now in shaded view we have some other options if i well shaded view still has x-ray on so i turn it off as you can see light is not affected what i can do you have the twirl down menu here you have extra options and as you can see look at the options you they change as you click on on the different uh, viewport shading modes so if i click here the options are different so if i go back to the solid for example the lighting you have different modes so for example if i choose right now we have studio mode which is pretty much the standard studio lighting that we see in here you can choose matte cap which stands for material capture which you'll see something like in zbrush that's what they use if you click on that it captures the material and kind of projects it onto, onto the objects so to give you an idea what a kind of material it will look like but also gives an effect of a quick looking render without actually taking much computation time so for example if i put that material on that kind of looks like the material capture or matte cap that you see in zbrush i put that on it, it would look like as if that's the material but being projected onto it so it's a good way to like, when you're modeling just to preview some things however this doesn't render when you render out so it's mainly for you when you're developing it and then flat is just flat colors so if you have different colors in here I, well this is for the point light so i'll undo that but if you had different colors applied to it it will it will actually take up different colors in that sense so with this one thing that's useful though is another thing that you see might see in zbrush is if you let's say you choose random if you have input zbrush if you have just poly groups it will or basically different objects it will randomly colorize different objects so it looks like you can identify what are quite quickly visually what are the different objects in your scene so if i go in and add another cube and then just move it around it will just randomly assign an object visually let's say add a cylinder just so i know what they look like or what are ob object basically um different objects in the scene 
uh, let's say a cone. Just adding different objects in the scene. So if I go back to it and then put it back to material, it's you don't see the randomize. So that's useful. So I'm going to just select this. Holding shift to select the, to click the others. Then I'm going to press delete. To delete them. Another thing, there's a hotkey to go through to basically choose these quickly. If you press just the Z button on your keyboard in, in a 3D viewport, this menu will come up and then you could just basically hover your mouse in which section you want it. So if I want to go to wireframe, I'll go to wireframe here. I press Z again. If I want to go to solid, I'll drag over here. If I want to go to render, go here. And material preview will go here. And it's changing the options up here. You, can, you might also see that there's numbers. So there's hotkeys to it. So if I want to go to wireframe without dragging there, the number is six. So you can press six on your keyboard. So it could be the numerical keyboard or I want to go to render. I could also do the number keys on, on top of your the letters on your keyboard. So let's say render is eight. It will go to eight. I press Z again. And if I want to go to material preview, that's two. That's what you would do for your look dev there. So while you're in this, these, this mode, for example, if you go into solid mode and go on the twirl down menu, you see you have background. So background, if you hover over it, it will say it'll be the theme. The background of the viewport will be the theme of what you choose for Blender. So right now, this is kind of like a dark theme of Blender. Older versions of Blender were lighter or you could switch it to a lighter theme. It will, it will mimic the theme that you have or you could say the, the world. So whatever you use for the world background, it will, it will change to that. Or you could choose for this specific viewport, you could choose a background. So for example, remember I could drag out down here to bring out another viewport. So let's say in this viewport, what it, remember to maximize a viewport or any editor or any pane that you have here, you could hold control spacebar. So I could just choose in here while the solid selected. The viewport, let's say I want to make the color more purplish. But since it's on viewport, it's only going to work on this specific viewport. So if I press control space bar, it's only, it goes back and you see this viewport, which is independent, is not affected by the color of the background of that one because I chose the specific viewport of that. And if I want to go back again, I could press control space bar so I could see the options, click here, and I go back to theme just to, so I know what it looks like. And for this, I don't need that. So I could choose, choose join areas, right click on the border, cho join area, and then click over there to merge it again. So, and if I want to go back to, let's say, oh, well, actually I'm in solid view. So what I want to do, solid view could give you a preview of what shadows could look like, but it's not accurate to what the render is. And what I'll show you what I mean. So if I click on here, while in solid uh, viewport shading here, there's option to say shadows. You could turn that on and you notice there's a shadow there and you could see how dark or bright you want it. But what you could do as well is that it's not, if I select this and move it around, you notice that the lighting is actually not being affected. This is a point light that's not, the shadow is not being affected by the lighting. If I click over here to the render view, wherever the lighting is, is actually being calculated because it's actually calculate the render is actually calculating what the final image would look like. That includes the calculations of the materials, shaders, and lighting. But in this view, it's just um, quick tricks to get a quick shadow to give you an idea, but not necessarily calculating the final render. So me moving the light around doesn't actually do anything. But what you can do while so back in, in the solid view, toggle that on, on and off. You can change how dark it is. But also, if you press this gear, there's a lighting ball that's similar to how lighting is in ZBrush, the interface. And you could click and drag around where the light would kind of represent in here. And you have things in here where you could change the shadow shift and whatnot. And 
shadow focus and whatever again these are tricks these are not actually calculating with the light itself but can be useful to help visualize i want to also point out that when you're creating objects here so for example if i'm going to add a couple of objects let's say a uv sphere i'll take that move it i'll go to object i will add uh, and i'll do cone i'll move it and i'll just do one more let's say a cylinder and move it so one thing I showed earlier is that if you select an object, you go down to its material. And we have a material in here. If you're in the render mode and I have this material, it will change that object's material. If I go in here, add a new material, it will change this object's material. But this is in render mode. And if you go into over here, which is the call the material preview mode of where you normally do the look dev you'll also see the colors that you change so let me just change the material again for and the material over here at new and the base color let's say blue this one material new base color let's say yellow right so again you see this in material preview and you'll see it in the the viewport the viewport shading for rendered but if you go to object the solid mode which is what you have by default you don't see any of these colors so how do you see it well in blender to change it what you have to do is first have the twirl down menu instead of showing the material go to object mode and now it's going to show the object color but you also have to assign it which assign it an object color that's associated with the object but that's not necessarily associated with the material so it's only visible in this viewport here so to do that with the object you have to go onto the object property itself it's not the material it's associated with the object and when you have that then you go down to viewport display and then you have the color by default it's white and he says display as texture we'll leave that as it is and we'll choose the color so in this case I could choose whatever color. It could be different than the material. Uh, let's say call that blue. So in solid, because I'm in solid shading mode for the viewport, I choose object. It's going to take up the object color. If I go into the shading mode, you notice the material color is actually different. It's green. I mean, I could try to match it or go in and copy it over if I want to. But this is how you could change the colors. So if I go into each one while in solid mode, while the twirl down, the color it's in object mode and it's taking up right here the object properties under the viewport display it's associated with the object and not the material i could choose different colors now and you can visualize them how you want so if you actually did want to actually copy the color over as i mentioned before like the color from this is the object property and that's the viewport display color which you only see in solid click in color object mode but if i go into let's say the click here and i go into the viewport shading it's selecting the color that's on the material uh, right here the material of it so actually so if you notice this color of this of the sphere for the object that's associated with the object of the cube is different than the material applied to it which is green so if i wanted to copy that over from the material again you can click on the material click on base color and click on it and you could copy each one of these values over and it will work so if i were to copy rgb for um basically the way it's ranged here in blender zero to one for the red green blue and the alpha channel so if i copy that Control c then the object selected go to the object property go to the viewport display go to color then go to R, paste it, Control V and press Enter. Then I have to go back to the material property color, click on it. Now I go on to the green, let's copy that for the G, go to the object, click here, paste, and then go back to the material, b and the alpha should be the same so i'm not gonna it's just one so i'm not gonna have to copy it because it should already be there 
Control C for this, go to the object, click there, Control V if to paste. All right, so now for this cube, if I go to solid mode and and look dev mode, look dev mode and solid mode, it's the same color. Now the shading is different, so it might look a little off, but that the color is the same. A little a quicker way you could copy if you don't want to go up for every channel for R, then B, then then G and A. If you click on the color, let's say I'm going to do the sphere now. And I'm going to go into the material of it and I want to see again if I look on the material version with the material preview and the solid version, the color is different for the sphere. So in the material preview, I can click here, go on the base color. You notice there's RGB, there's HSV, so there's RGB for the primary colors, red, green, blue, HSV for hue saturation value. It's another representation of how to describe the same color. And then there's hex for hexadecimal. So if you come from web, you'll see that instead of going uh, representing values from 0 to 1, or well, decimal is 0 to 10, they represent it from 0 to 16 or 0 to 15. There's 16 different values. So hex is 6, decimal is 10. So basically, in short, this is another representation of the, how all three of these are the same color just represented in the different formats. So what's easy about this one is hex, you could just copy everything in one shot because it describes describe the color is just with just this um, alphanumerical value. And then if I copy that, at least in Blender, then I could go into the object property, go into the color, and I'll choose hexadecimal for that and I could paste the whole thing in one shot. And now the solid color and the shaded color, they're the same. I'm going to render it. Okay, and they look different, slightly different because of the, the shading applied to it. But that's just a, a way you could copy colors a little quicker. If you click on a color, go to the hexadecimal representation, copy it, and then go to the other color where you want to apply it, click on it, go to the hexadecimal representation and paste it there. You could also click and like sample colors is another way you could do it as well but in this case swapping different modes might be a little difficult thank you for watching remember to like comment subscribe and hit the notification bell